Hi everyone, Dr. Mancini here. I just wanted to follow up after our presentation last week. I know I gave you a lot of information, so I want to come back around and do some post uh, you know, follow-up recordings here so you can get a better sense of strategies uh, that you can implement in your life based on the concepts we talked about, as well as strategies that we provide injured workers every day uh, they get referred to our office. And again, this is all part of our commitment to provide not just what I believe to be the highest quality of care and the specialty of acupuncture, but more importantly, a standard of care that we hope will ripple into the field of acupuncture to help injured workers have high quality access beyond receiving care at our center. So I want to quickly cover some key strategies for a few topics that you can implement in your life and the ones that we help injured workers every day at our center. And by the way, feel free to share this information with your colleagues and I also invite you and your colleagues to attend any of our monthly complimentary training sessions we provide injured workers at our center. All right, so let's get started with the first key takeaway I want each of you to really get, and that's even before we get into this metabolic and neurological drivers of chronic pain, and it really comes down to one factor, and this is what we really emphasize, especially those in chronic pain, and that is this. We have to focus on something beyond the pain, because as long as this injured worker, or anyone for that matter, focuses only on pain, when that pain starts to go down, reduce, get managed, what happens? You lose your drive. You lose your motivation. You, you lose the reasons for doing what you're doing because your only goal is to get out of pain. So as I said in the class, and I'll say it again, you got to have a compelling vision. You got to go beyond the pain. And this is what we ask our injured workers. What is this condition preventing you from being, doing, and having in your life? What have you been missing out on? We continue to focus on what the condition is preventing them from having and start to focus on that. That there is a compelling vision that when they get a sense of it, we see these injured workers start to create momentum in their health. All right, so with that said, let's get into the key concepts of what drive pain. And I'm gonna to touch on some very important factors. Uh, the first one is low cortisol. And, and here's the symptoms of low cortisol. Cannot stay asleep, craving salt, slow starter in the morning, afternoon fatigue, dizziness upon standing quickly, afternoon headaches, headaches with exertion or stress, and weak nails. Now, I also indicated that when someone has low cortisol, which means inability to quench inflammation, they also experience symptoms of hypoglycemia, which is unstable blood sugar. And this here is much more of a tell to give you a sense if you have cortisol issues. Now, of these symptoms, craving sweets during the day, irritable if meals are missed, on and on, the biggest one that I've seen that's the most common and the most obvious is eating relieves fatigue. Now, this is a common thing we hear. You know, I eat and I feel better. But honestly, when you start to feel better when you eat, that tells us that you're going into it with low blood sugar. So just have a sense of that uh, to understand that that is a, one of the tells, not a real obvious one, but it's a tell amongst all these other factors. All right, so let's go into the 10 key principles on how to stabilize your blood sugar and give some recovery time to your adrenals. The first one is do not skip breakfast. One of the biggest blood sugar dysregulations occur simply because people miss breakfast. The challenge is that this, with blood sugar instability, they often are not hungry in the morning. This then perpetuates the problem of not eating until they start crashing later in the morning, which causes them to grab that quick sugary snack or that drink to temporarily bump up their sugar and therefore give their energy. The problem is what spikes up quickly will also drop down quickly like a climb of a roller coaster, and it drops quick. So what I tell my patients is that we need to start small. This process is simply about training the body to receive food. Over time, I promise that light morning grays becomes something to look forward to. Number two, eat a protein-dominant breakfast, preferably rich in essential fatty acids and low in simple sugars. So when you start your day with a protein-based breakfast, along with good quality fats, blood sugar will be more stable through the day. What does that look like? More consistent energy through the entire day, better focus, and fat burning, just to name a few. Now, don't take my word for it. Test for yourself. First and foremost, start small if you haven't been eating breakfast. And if you have, then begin to lower your starchy, sugary, or carbohydrate-based foods and increase the proteins and or fats. 
And what I tell my patients is to do this gradually as to allow the body to adapt. I'm learning over the years to not let the energy of my enthusiasm overcome what the patients can do because it's kind of like a fire hose. So it tends to be too much all at once. So I've learned that over time, patients will get the process because they'll learn how to adapt to it. So the name of the game is slow, steady, and with patience. Okay, number three, eat every two to three hours. Don't wait until you are hungry. If you're feeling famished, have cravings like you're gonna eat the entire fridge, you went too long without eating. Realize that we need to condition the body to stabilize blood sugar. Initially, it has to be like clockwork, even when you don't feel hungry. What does this do? It resets the body's blood sugar to stay regulated versus its old hardwired track of the roller coaster. And you guys know that roller coaster. It is absolutely essential to realize that unstable blood sugar is not a standalone issue. In fact, the longer and more unstable your blood sugar has been, the stronger it has trained your brain to trigger anxiety, fatigue, depression, pain, you name it. Blood sugar is a big button. Why? Because it's based on a neurological concept called long-term potentiation. What does that big word mean? It just simply means that the nervous system, along with the brain, learns to do a specific action so well that it becomes much easier to do with much less effort in the future. This is the same that an Olympic track athlete or any athlete, high-level athlete, does to get a hardwired skill or a mathematician to calculate an evaluation and uh, an equation in their head with lightning speed. So stabilizing your blood sugar is one of the most important actions you could do to unwind and dampen the conditioned neurological habits that are hardwired to your brain. Okay, number four, snack with the low glycemic food. Any kind of food such as nuts, seeds, hard boiled eggs, avocados, etc. When it comes to snacking, it is critical to have foods that don't spike your blood sugar. These foods should dampen and slow down the breakdown of sugar and provide more sustainable, slow-releasing energy. The best foods to do that are high-quality fats and proteins. Number five, avoid all fruit juice, soda, and carrot juice. To the degree your blood sugar is out of balance, the more disciplined you must be not to take in foods or drinks that drive it up. What will determine success is the consistent ingestion of fats and proteins, good fats of course, taken throughout the day. If your protein fat snacks are missed, you'll crave the sugary drinks. If you have a craving, that is feedback that you've gone too long. I've had patients initially need to chew on a few almonds almost hourly because their blood sugar was so, un so unstable. Those same patients over time were able to spread their snacks over several hours, ultimately to three meals a day. The body learns through conditioning how to be more efficient with fuel that it receives. It's all about getting clear on the outcome you want your body to achieve, then setting a game plan with the goal in mind. Now, if you want to lose weight, you must train your body to use your fat stores as a source of energy instead of that bagel you eat every morning and that high-carb snack you eat through the day. Number six, never consume high glycemic fruits without a source of protein or fat. What are high glycemic fruits? Fruits such as bananas, pineapples, papayas, to name a few. But when it comes to blood sugar issues, I tell my patients that they should not eat any fruit without a protein or fat. With unstable blood sugar, we are trying to break the pattern of spiking, so it's best not to chance it. Whenever you eat any fruit by itself, it will bring up your blood sugar more rapidly than when combined with a fat or protein. Again, it's all about teaching the body to have even blood sugar. The next step, number seven, avoid minimize all adrenal stimulants. What I tell my patients is to minimize or avoid caffeine. This is where they look at me with a look, that look that often follows with the statement, I need my coffee in the morning and I'm not giving it up. Now, the intensity of their communication is a measure of how unstable their blood sugar is. This is where the process needs to be slow and steady. Instead of taking away the coffee, begin to increase proteins and fats in the morning and through the day. Demonstrate to your body that you are starting to feel good. Begin to have the experiences of sustainable energy. Then, when it comes to coffee, it's not that big of a deal to eliminate it or at least reduce it. It then may end up just being something you enjoy at a lesser amount because you realize 
that you get so much more energy from your diet. All right, number eight, eat a well-balanced diet consisting of vegetables and lean meats. Again, what we're trying to do is increase its balance of proteins with foods to create an alkaline body. Now, it's important to understand that if you only eat meat, it can lead to a host of other problems. This is why I tell my patients to strive to make your diet consist of at least 70% plant-based. In other words, with at least your main meals along with snacks if possible, you need to have a majority of it consisting of vegetables. Of the many pages that I can give you of reasons to eat your vegetables, let alkalizing your body be on the top. Now, since your body consists of over 70% water, support it with water-rich foods such as vegetables, will provide it all the resources that thrive and detoxify. In today's world of increasing toxins, the body's ability to have a good detoxification system is critical. All right, number nine, do not eat sweets after dinner before bed. This is a big no-no. Does this mean you never eat sweets for the rest of your life? No, it just simply means that you don't want to eat sweets after dinner on a regular basis. Do not make it a staple of your diet. If you do, you shut off growth hormone and basically you speed up the aging process. Not to mention that your blood sugar will get very unstable at night, which causes most people to wake up in the middle of the night. And the big issue there is unstable blood sugar. And then lastly, number 10. If you develop fatigue or cravings after a meal, you have exceeded your carbohydrate tolerance. What does that mean? That simply means that if you experience any indication of fatigue, basically feeling tired or cravings, you want to have something sweet, you have exceed your carb tolerance. So what do you do? Real simple. You lower whatever carbohydrate you were eating and at the same time, you need to increase some kind of fat or protein. You cannot take anything away without replacing it. Otherwise, you're going to end up eating a refrigerator in the middle of the night. So again, lower the carbohydrate content and or increase the fat or protein. And what that'll do, it'll give you much more sustainable energy. Now, what's the tell here? If the fatigue no longer exists and the cravings no longer exist. If you continue to have the fatigue or cravings, that carbohydrate has to be reduced lower, more, and the protein or fat has to be increased more. Again, this is all about feedback. If you continue to have fatigue or cravings, you got to eliminate that carbohydrate completely. So these are the 10 key concepts when it comes to low cortisol and or hypoglycemia. Um, we're going to end here and uh, we'll, go, we'll move on to the next topic on our next recording. Hope this helps and have a great day. Take care.